In this lesson, we will continue talking about function composition. So let's get started. Let's start by looking at the small introduction question. And it states, well, is it possible for us to find two functions, f of x and g of x, so that the given composition, it's equivalent to the function that has been given in this example. In other words, our job is to define two functions, which we're going to call f of x and g of x. And if we compose them, it should be equivalent to this function called h of x. So here we're saying that h of x, it's equivalent to the composition of f of x of g of x. Now, this example has many different solutions. This is not a unique solution. But what would have happened if we let f of x be equivalent to x squared and g of x to be equivalent to x plus 2? So what would have happened to these two functions if we decided to compose them? Well, if we take a look at their composition, f of g of x, we're saying I'm going to take a look at the function of f, and I'm going to substitute it with an expression of x plus 2. And notice that f of x is x squared. So every time we see an x, we're going to substitute it with the expression of x squared. And if we do that, notice that we're going to get x squared plus 2, which is exactly what we wanted. So if we define f of x as x squared, and we define g of s as x plus 2, if we compose them, we're going to get h of x. And the same goes with example b. In example b, we are saying that this is our h of x. And again, if we're going to define h of x as the composition of f on g, what would have happened if we let our f of x to be just the four root of x? And if we let g of x to be the actual expression of 3x minus 2 over x plus 5. Well, if we compose them, if we perform our composition, f of g of x, this is equivalent of f, and we're going to substitute it by the expression of 3x minus 2 over x plus 5. But where is f? f is just defined as just the four root of x. So every time we see an x, we're going to substitute it with the actual expression here. So what we're going to end up here is just going to be the four root of 3x minus 2 over x plus 5. And this is exactly the function that we wanted. So there are two ways that we can think about composition. First, we can define the composition. And then based on the composition, we can come up with two functions that we compose them, give us a composition. Or we can define two functions and then compose them to get a result. So we can go both ways now. We can go from functions to composition and from composition to functions. But now in this lesson, we're going to concentrate more on the idea of the domain of composition of functions. And what we want to do here is um, continue with the lesson. So it states, how can we determine the domain of a composition of two functions? Well, to define the domain of a composition, the first thing that we need to do is we first need to define the composition. If we want to define the domain of the composition, well, we first, we first need to know what is the composition. So let's do an example here. So here we have f and g of x. And what we want to do, we want to compose them. So let's do that here, where I can notice that f of x is being defined as 5 over x minus 1. And g of x is going to be defined as just 4 over 3x plus 2. So let's define the actual composition function. So f composed of g of x, this is equivalent as f composed with g of x. 
which is equivalent to f composed with g of x. But notice that g of x is 4 over 3x minus 2. So what we want to do now is we want to go to the function of f, which is right here. And every time we see an x, which is just this little one right here, we're going to substitute it with the function of 4 over 3x minus 2. So here we have it. And now let's just evaluate this little x right here with the expression. So here we have 4 over 3x minus 2 minus 2. So to continue our analysis, let's try to simplify this. So let's continue with our simplification here. So here we have 5 over 4, 3x minus 2, minus 2. So let's try to simplify this. So in the denominator, I'm going to make sure that they both have the same denominator. So here we have 4 over 3x minus 2. minus 2, 3x minus 2 over 3x minus 2. So that way they have the same denominator. So now this is equivalent to just 5 over 4 minus 6x plus 4 over 3x minus 2. So let's continue simplifying this. Uh, perhaps this was not the best example because it's a lot of algebraic manipulation. So 6x plus 8, but we're almost there and 3x minus 2. And to continue simplifying this, notice that this is my numerator and this is my denominator. So whenever you have a fraction, it's been defined, a fraction divided by another fraction, this is equivalent of just getting the numerator and multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. Which finally gives us a result of 15x minus 10 over negative 6x plus 8. So this is the expression that we're going to be working with. So let me just write it over here. So this is equivalent to just 15x minus 10 all over minus 6x plus 8. So let's just erase what we do have here on the bottom. So now going back to the idea, which is defining the domain of the function, we'll notice that the result of the composition, it's irrational. It is a fraction. And whenever we do have a rational function, there is one restriction, and that is that the denominator can never be zero. So notice that there is a value that can make the denominator of my fraction being equivalent to zero. So let's define that point. So let's define that point. And that point is whenever the denominator is equivalent to zero. So let's do that. Let's define what value gives me that result. So if we let x be equivalent to 8 over 6, notice that if we plug that in, that's going to give us a denominator of zero. So what this is saying is that my composition It cannot use the value of x equals 8 over 6 because if we substitute x on my denominator, notice that it's going to give me a value of 0. And if my denominator is 0, it gives me an undefined number. So when it comes to domain, we want to identify what values of x's are we allowed to use. And we're not allowed to use 8 over 6 because if we substitute it in here, notice that it's going to give us a denominator zero, therefore we're going to end up with a undefined number. So now the question that we want to think about is, is this the only value that we're not allowed to use? Well, let's think about this for a second. The composition, before we define the composition, something here happened. We evaluated the function of g on f. So therefore we also have to check does g have any restrictions because we are substituting the value of g into the function of f and that's how we're getting this so we also have to check what values will make the function g of x undefined as well because that's the function that we're going to plug in and we don't want to plug in a function whenever we can encounter undefined numbers
So we also have to check that. Under what values does g of x is equivalent to an undefined number? Well, let's see. g of x is being defined as 4 over 3x minus 2. That's a fraction. That's a, ra no, that's a rational. So therefore, my denominator cannot be 0. And there exists a value that will make my denominator be equivalent to 0. And that value is just, uh, what would that be? x equals 2 over 3. In this case, g of x cannot use the value of x equals 2 over 3. So therefore, my composition cannot use that value as well. Because g of x, we want to define the domain where g of x is defined as well. And 2 over 3, it's a value that we cannot use on g of x or else it's going to make the function that we're going to plug in an undefined number. So in conclusion, we are not allowed or we cannot use the values of 8 over 6 and 2 thirds. So all we got to do here is just to define the domain, we just got to write this in the following notation. So we're allowed to use any value of x that we want except 8 over 6 and 2 thirds. Now, if we illustrate this, let's say we have here some kind of a number line, we're allowed to use any value that I want here, except 8 over 6 and 2 over 3. I think they're the other way around. I think 2 thirds is smaller than 8 over 6. So let me just switch that. So we got... 2 third and 8 over 6. So there are open values. So we're allowed to choose any value of x that I want under this intervals. So the way that we write this is, well, the domain is equivalent to negative infinity all the way to 2 thirds. And at 2 thirds, we're not going to take that value in consideration. So we're going to open an interval and we're going to jump it. And now we're going to go from two thirds all the way to eight over six, which is this interval here. And now we're going to jump the value of eight over six. So we're going to unis and we're going to go from eight over six all the way to positive infinity. So this is how we can define the domain of this composition. It's saying all possible values of x except 2 thirds and 8 over 6. So notice that here all we're doing is we're running and we're jumping this value. And then we're taking all these values in consideration. And then we're jumping this value. And then we're taking all these values in consideration. And that's how we can define it right here underneath it. So let's just do another example real quick here. And again, it is the same idea. Let's try to define the domain of the composition. So the first thing that we want to identify is what are the functions, which in this case here we are defining f of x, and here we are defining g of x. And the way that we want to define our composition is of f composed of g. So let's just write that down. So f composed of g is equivalent to f what is g? g is equivalent to the square root of 3 minus x. And all we're doing now is we're going to go to the function of f. And every time we see an x, we're going to substitute it with the square root of 3 minus x. So if we do that, we're going to get the following result. So we're going to get the big square root from here. And every time we see an x, we're going to substitute it with the whole expression, square root of 3 minus x. So we're going to get 3 minus x plus 2. So again, to define, the comp to define the domain of the composition, the first thing that we want to do is let's try to define the domain of the function that we're going to plug in. And the function that we're plugging in is g of x. And here we have g of x. So let's try to define the domain 
of g of x, which is the function that we're going to plug in. Well, here we have the expression of 3 minus x. And now let's realize when is it. And again, right now we're just keeping everything in terms of real numbers. So we want to think about when is the square root of 3 minus x a real number? Well, since my root is to the second exponent, I know that the moment that I take the square root of a negative value, that's a complex number. So I want to keep all my answers to be regular, uh, real numbers. So under what values am I always going to end up with positives inside the square root? Well, one way to identify is just by setting the inside of the square root to be greater or equal to zero. Because this is essentially what we want. We want to see when is the inside of the square root positive. In other ways of writing it is when is this, the inside of the square root greater than zero. And if we do this, we're going to end up with negative x plus minus, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to negative three and x. And again, what I'm doing here, I'm dividing it by negative one. That way it cancels out. But remember that whenever you divide by a negative value, the sign must change. So here we have minus three. So we know that any value that is less than three will always give me a value that is greater or equivalent to zero. Well, let's just do some quick tests. Um, let's choose a value that is less than three, two, three minus two, that's definitely greater than zero. So we're good. Uh, let's choose zero, three minus zero. That's three, three is positive. So we're good. And I notice that if we choose any value that is greater than three. Let's choose four, three minus four, that's negative. And inside of a square root, that's not good. So in this case, we're only allowed to choose We're only allowed to choose values when x is less than equal to uh, less than or equal to three. So this takes care of the domain of what we're going to plug in. Well, now let's actually try to see well what is the domain of the whole composition. So f of g of x. Well, it's not going to be easy to identify what's the domain of the composition function because this is a whole composition. It is the square root of another square root plus two. But now, how can we identify the domain of this big function? Well, we know that we have a big square root here, and that's to the second degree. That's the second root. And we know one big restriction, and that is that the inside of that square root should always be positive. So therefore, we want to take a look at the values where the inside of that square root is greater or equal to zero. Because here we have a big square root and we want to identify numbers that will not make the inside negative. So therefore we're just looking for values that are greater than zero. And notice that this expression will always be true because if we're gonna take a look at the whole overall function, notice that since we're restricting everything in terms of real numbers, this expression the lowest that this expression can take is zero. So if the lowest that this expression can take is zero, and if the lowest I add two, my result, it's always going to be greater than zero. So this expression here, it's always true. The lowest value that the square root can take, at least the second root, it's zero because it can only give you positive values. So the square root gives us the lowest is zero. And if I add two to it, that will always be greater than zero. So therefore this overall expression, it's always true. So what is the actual domain of the overall composition? Well, in this case, notice that we're looking at intervals. We're looking at intervals. We're on our previous example, we we're just looking for points for specific values. So how can we define the domain of the overall composition? Well, let's do the same example as the same strategy as we did in our previous example. Let's do a number line and let's label what we know. So let's label, let me do this in red. 
So this interval, it's telling me that any value that is less than three, we're okay with. So we're, we're allowed to choose any value that is less than three. And now the composition of the overall function, it's telling me it doesn't really matter what value of X you choose. It's always going to be true. So now the real, the real domain of this composition is whenever those two intervals are overlapping. And notice that here, both intervals are overlapping. Notice that it has arrows, so it just continues going on the left-hand side. So therefore, the domain of the composition is for those values that are going from negative infinity all the way to 3. And notice that we're allowed to choose the value of 3 because this is a less than or equal to so 3, so we can do this in a closed bracket. So notice that the main of the composition is not that straightforward because we got to take two ideas in consideration. The first one is, since the composition is made out of plugging a function into another function, I have to find the domain of the function that I'm plugging in. And then I can define the domain of the overall composition. And then perhaps we want to do some kind of a number line here and try to see when are those two ideas merged together. And in this case, we want to exclude two points. So therefore we excluded those two points. And when your domain is being defined by some kind, of, some kind of intervals or inequalities, the domain of the actual composition is whenever those two inequalities are overlapping. So with this, it concludes our lesson for the function composition as an extension lesson.